Another year has come and gone, and with it a whole slew of new chapters for Jujutsu Kaisen. And I think most of us would agree that it was a pretty damn good year to be a Jujutsu Kaisen fan. We got a lot of really, really good stuff this year. We got the Sendai Colony, we got Tokyo Colony number two, and not so much with Sakurajima, but it had some, some good stuff. And we ended off the year with a fucking banger with the battle against Kenjaku. So now, here, on the last day of the year, I'm here to talk about what I consider to be the top five best chapters of Jujutsu Kaisen in 2022. But before I get into that, as always, if you haven't already, definitely please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and click that notification bell so you don't miss any of my uploads. I do Jujutsu Kaisen chapter reactions and reviews. Every week we get a new chapter. Although I'm sure a lot of you have noticed I've kind of been slacking on doing reviews, so my New Year's resolution is going to be to try and do a review for every single chapter that comes out in the next year. Hopefully I can stick to it. Uh, but yeah, without any further ado, let's get right into the top five. Starting off in the number five spot, I have chapter 188. This was the real meat of Hakari versus Kashimo. We had gotten pretty much all of the explanations out of the way. We'd gotten done with Kashimo's flashback, so we kind of understood his whole deal. We understand how both of their powers work. It's time for them to just fight. And they do. It is just a pure action chapter of these two trying to kill each other. I'm sure the most memorable parts of it for most people would be them smacking the shipping container between each other until they just get so close that they're just they're just crushing it into pulp between their fists. They're just both crushing it together trying to get to each other. And then that cliffhanger of Kashmo blowing a hole through Hakari's stomach and Hakari pulling off one more domain expansion right before he dies just as the chapter ends. It was a really good combat chapter and ended off with a really solid cliffhanger. All in all, really good. Pretty reflective of the overall quality of the Hakari and Kashima fight. That being pretty goddamn good. In the number four spot, I have chapter 196. I think all of us agree that Sakurajima was probably the weakest stretch of the story that we got this year. Mostly just due to the fact that when it started off, it had some kind of poor pacing. I'd say in general, it had some kind of poor pacing. The characters involved weren't all the most interesting. Maki was the only really interesting one there. Yeah, Kamo had some interesting stuff, but there's not really any Kamo stands out there. And now he is just kind of a piece of shit. Uh, so him being back was kind of amusing, but I don't know if it was anything like super exciting. Then we had these two random guys show up out of nowhere and it's just like, what, what, what's going on in this colony? But as it turned out, those two random guys were not joke characters. Dido and Mio were probably some of the best parts of the Sakurajima colony. Dido for sheer hype, if we're being really honest here, and Mio what he managed to do for Maki's character development, which is why I have this chapter here in the top five, because this is basically a Maki character development chapter. It's her finally, maybe not completely letting go of all of the terrible stuff that's happened to her and all of the really serious stuff going on that she needs to focus on, but just more so learning to be free, not to shackle herself so much by all of these things and just kind of live, really, you know, just kind of try to live in the moment and be free. And I did a whole review for this chapter talking about the importance of freedom as a theme for characters and also its importance in terms of the actual power system, how important it is for a character to be mentally free and in a state of oneness with everything. Uh, so some people thought this chapter seemed like kind of an ass pull, but not to me. In my eyes, it was just some some damn fine character development stuff. Uh, just a bit of a reminder to everyone that, yes indeed, Maki is the best female character in the series. Kiss my ass. In the number three spot, I have chapter 208, the last chapter of the year. I don't care if the unofficial release comes out today. I don't care if it comes out while I'm recording this video. 
I'm going by the official releases, even though I don't read them. Uh, but I digress. The last official chapter of the year. Not really so much for the big Yuki hype stuff. I mean, a little bit. The Yuki hype stuff is hype. Using your body to create a black hole is pretty fucking insane. Um, and does go to show why she was a special grade. But honestly, the parts of this chapter that hit me the most were the first half of the chapter, first half or so, which was in a flashback and was primarily focused on Chozo and Chozo's internal struggle with his actions, his mistakes, his role as an older brother, which is the primary focus of Chozo's character. Chozo, as we see in this chapter, has come so far as a character from if you want to talk about his first appearance during Origin of Obedience, just kind of a interesting looking bad guy with not much else going on, kind of a basic revenge vendetta to one of the most interesting and nuanced characters in the entire series, which I think is probably best showcased in this very chapter. And that's why I'm very happy that he's not dead. Yeah, Yuki, Yuki dying is unfortunate, you know, assuming that we don't find out she merged with Tengen or something in the next chapter. Um, but, you know, that sucks, but I'm I'm so relieved that Chozo's still around because watching him and his development as a character over the last uh, hundred or so chapters now, yeah, it's been about a hundred chapters since Yuji versus Chozo, has been phenomenal. It's just been so interesting and enticing to watch. And I'm very excited to see where his character goes in the future. In the number two spot, I have chapter 173, the beginning of the Sendai colony, which, let's be real here, I think we all agree was probably the best stretch of the series this year. It was just, oh, it was just banger after banger. It was a consistent stretch of just really good chapters. It had that Shibuya feel to it. Not so much the emotional or writing aspects of Shibuya, a little bit, but not nearly as much, because Sendai just kind of happens, really, but Shibuya was the culmination of the whole series leading up to it, but it had the, the hype. Shibuya was so fucking hype with all of the insane fights happening in it, and that's just what Sendai is. Sendai is one of my favorite things in any battle shonen. It's when the really high tier characters start fighting each other. Yes, the first chunk of the chapter is doing the conclusion for Tokyo Colony number one, and it's really good at doing that. It is more so the conclusion for Megumi stuff, which was really good. The Reggie fight was really solid. And then the angel reveal is like, ooh, what's going on here? It was interesting. But then the second half of the chapter is just like, oh yeah, those guys in uh, Tokyo Kani number one, yeah, they're bitch made, they're trash, they're garbage. Sendai Colony is where the fucking monsters are. Oh, we have uh, we have this guy that's able to create domains with his Shikigami or some insane thing like that. We've got some dude that does a fucking pompadour blasts, even though that didn't get revealed, but you know. This dude's got the highest cursed energy output of anyone in the colonies. That's insane! We have someone who can manipulate the sky. What the fuck does that mean? Oh, and we've got a special grade curse. Ah, cool, I guess. Special grade curses are really not anything remarkable most of the time, but you know, it's like, oh, cool, another one. That's neat. And then we get Yuta showing up again, just one-shotting one of these guys. Technically two-shotting. Basically off-screening them, because it's Yuta. He's top five in the verse. So, if you want to get someone really, really excited for the upcoming stretch of chapters, you go, oh yeah, look at all these really cool, really strong new characters. It's time for this established, really strong character to run a fucking gauntlet. Are you ready? You're not. You're not actually ready, because... I don't know how much Sendai prepared people, or, you know, how much this chapter prepared people for how absolutely insane the Sendai colony was gonna get. Speaking of... In the number one spot as the best chapter of the year, I have chapter 178. I have a few reasons for this. First off, we get the full reveal and explanation for what's going on with Rika. Ever since 
Yuta came back after Shibuya, we were like, what is the deal with Rika? Rika's supposed to be dead and gone. How is she here? And we finally get the explanation for how that works. We get a full explanation for how Yuta's powers work now. They're a little bit different than they were before. Then we just get combat. We just get Yuta and Rika fighting Uro and Ryu and just everybody going all out. It's just a bunch of big crazy action. It's all will really well choreographed. It's really well drawn. It's really exciting. It's the kind of stuff that you read a series called Sorcery Fight for, you know? And then, you know, we got the end of the chapter. Three domain expansions. Now, Gege did blue ball us with this one, that son of a bitch. But you'd be lying if you said that this did not get you more hyped than, like, almost any other chapter in the series. This was the most exciting conclusion to any chapter this year. It was like, what? We're gonna get three domain reveals in one chapter? What the fuck happens when three people do a domain battle? Oh my god, Yuta has a domain expansion? What does it look like? It raised so many hype questions. You know, a, a specific variety of questioning. Hype questions. Um, that I, I, I feel like no other chapter really compared to it in that respect. Uh, even if we got baited by it. Even if Gege blue balled us in the end. You know, obviously, we're probably going to see these domains in the future, hopefully. So, you know, it's kind of setting some stuff up for later. But in the moment, when that chapter came out, <clears throat> it was just the best shit ever. It was just so good. I think it's the best chapter of the year. Um, but what do you guys think? I have a few honorable mentions. Ones that I thought were really good, but didn't quite crack into my top five. You know, maybe if I did a top ten, I would include them in here, but... At that point, you're, you're just kind of like, what's the point of a ranking then, really? Because so many of these chapters are really comparable in quality. I think we had some of the most consistent quality this year. Just so many good chapters that these five that I previously listed were the ones that stood out the most. But for my honorable mentions, I have chapter 180, effectively the conclusion of the Sendai colony and the clash between Yuta and Ryu, which was really good for both of their characters. I have chapter 186, which explained the benefits of Hakari's domain expansion and getting a jackpot, which was just madness. I have chapter 197 for Maki flexing on Naoya after getting her power up, which was delicious. And also that madness of the final spread reveal with Naoya turning back into his human form. That was, and the domain expansion. Love domain expansions. And then the last one, chapter 205, for us finally getting the reveal for Yuki's curse technique. That being hype as fuck due to, you know, concepts being smashed through and whatnot. And then, finally, the reveal of Kenjaku's domain expansion. All of it was really hype. You'll notice there were two types of chapters this year. There were character development chapters and there were hype chapters. Both of them were really good. Some of the best of them were the chapters that combined those two things a bit. But it seems like at the end of the day, sheer overwhelming hype took the cake. It's a bit of a contrast from last year when I thought the best chapter was, I don't remember the exact number, but Yuji character development. Yeah, I'm the one that killed those people. That was, <clears throat> that was so good. I don't think we got an emotional peak quite like that this year. But I think in terms of hype and excitement, we kind of blew last year out of the fucking water. So who knows? Maybe 2023 is going to be even more insane. It'll have even higher action peaks, even greater emotional payoffs. Hopefully it's not the last year of serialization like Gege has said it will probably be. I'm hoping he's just really, really bad at judging how long his series is going to last. I don't know what I'm going to do when the series ends, but, you know, well, I'm just going to have to see what happens. So with that, that's all for today's video. If you guys enjoyed, once again, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to click that notification bell so you don't miss any of my uploads. If you enjoy discussing Jujutsu Kaisen with other people, or you just enjoy the content I produce in this channel, I highly suggest you check out my Discord server. I have a link to that down in the description. 
Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys around and have a very happy new year. Take care. Bye-bye.